Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to talk about the Fibonacci search. Now, this is a very interesting algorithm that I thought would be nice to cover. Um, the way this works is, everybody thinks this works like a binary search, but actually it's not really kind of a binary search. It's more of uh, eliminating two-thirds, one-third of the array at a time, and basically pinpointing with the Fibonacci numbers where your element might just actually reside. So um, the first thing that I want to tell you guys is that this is not the best way to uh, execute uh, this particular form of um, uh, algorithm. It's just that I wanted to write it in this manner for conceptual understanding. So, uh, so yeah, I, I built it like this. The only reason I don't think you should use uh, this in any production environment or anything like that is because uh, I've created a Fibonacci generator which runs recursively and that could be a problem. So apart from that, everything is fine. Everything works just like it should. Um, so let's start with the Fibonacci generator. What does this do? So the Fibonacci generator in this case, it takes a value n and um, it basically gives you the Fibonacci number at the index of n. So let's say you pass in something like uh, 5. So it will give you the Fibonacci number at the index of 5, which in this case is coincidentally 5. Um, so the most important thing that I want you to understand in this is that um, okay, let's just go into it. Let's just go deeper and, and then maybe you will understand how to do this. That's what the fuck am I saying? Anyway, so uh, you get this value. So I just want to point out what we are finding. X in this case is the value that we want to find. Array is our array. Oh, I don't know why I wrote 13 over here, but array is our array and um, print Fibonacci search of array of uh, X. So I'm calling this function over here, Fibonacci search. I'm passing in the array and I'm passing in the value of X which is the value that I want to find. So I've passed in the value of x. Yeah, so you have the function over here, Fibonacci search, and here we have the value of m. Now the value of m is very important in this case because uh, that is going to be the Fibonacci index that you point to at the current moment. Um, I'm just going to copy this array over here. I just want to keep it with me so that I don't lose track of it. Okay, so I'm going to keep it over here. Then I'm going to say m is equal to what? So after you execute this part, m is going to be equal to 7. And now you're going to tell me, hey, Quinston, how did that happen? And I'm going to be like, wait, while Fibonacci generator of m is less than the length of the array. So every time this function is true, obviously this while loop is going to run. So m equal to 0 initially, Fibonacci generator of m. So Fibonacci generator of 0 will be equal to 0. And 0 is less than the length of the array? Of course it is. It is obviously true. So m equal to m plus 1. Now m becomes... 1. So Fibonacci generator of 1 is 1. Is it less than the length of the array? Of course it is. And that will go and go and go and go in the loop. And basically at the end of it, you'll get something like uh, 13. So 13 is less than the length of the array. It is obviously not less than, which means it is false and you break out of the loop. But what happened there? Why did it become 13? Because m became 7. m became 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then this became 13. And that is your value at the moment. M is 7. So remember, Fibonacci generator is the value of the Fibonacci number. M is the index of the Fibonacci number. Okay, so index 7, value 13. Okay, you, I, I hope you understand that because that is very important. Now I'm just going to copy this part and uh, I'm going to put it at the bottom of offset. Why? Because I want to add offset in here. What is offset? You will understand offset probably better if you understand the algorithm. Um, let's just skip offset for now. I just want to keep it in the list of, of things to do. So, um, so we have offset over here and, and so on and so forth. Now, this is the most important part of the entire algorithm, simply because this is the entire algorithm. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, m equal to 7, right? So the while loop basically states that Fibonacci generator of m is greater than 1. Now, you might imagine a Quinston. This is a very um, random or ambiguous uh, while loop. Why do we have this? And my answer is, again, let's go through the algorithm and you will understand. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I'm sure you, you're going to stick through it with me. Um, wait. Okay, so let's say I put this thing over here and I want to find the value of i. So what is my i going to be initially? i is equal to the min of offset plus Fibonacci generator of m minus 2. Now, think about this. What is offset? Offset is minus 1, and the Fibonacci generator of m minus 2 is Fibonacci of 5 because m is 7. 
Hebner Jamilra 5, which is the value 5. So 5 and minus 1 together will give me a value of 4. So i becomes 4. You might be wondering, but Quinston, why do you have this min over here and why do you have this length of array of minus 1? Now, now this array is idealistic, at least in this case. A lot of times the Fibonacci number, the, the array that you will have will be massive. It will be thousands of numbers, thousands. So in that case, it is very difficult to pinpoint 100% that this value over here is going to be less than the length of the array. Because if this is not less than the length of the array, then the program doesn't run because it's an exception, the memory allocation exception, because there is no array at that position. There is no element in the array at that position because it doesn't exist, which is why you have a, a min of length of array, because even if this doesn't exist, even if this doesn't exist in the array, you can still replace it with this so that it doesn't break the program. Um, so this is basically used to split the array and I is what I will check for if the value exists over there or not. And apart from that, that is pretty much it. So now I got the value of I, right? I is four. Now I need to test. I need to test. What is my X right now? X is the value that I want to find. X is 60. So I'm going to write 60 over here just so that I don't uh, get confused. I get confused very often. Um, so let's check this out over here. If X is greater than array of I, okay, what is array of I? Array of I is array of four. And array of four is 56. So 56 is being compared with 60. So is 60 greater than 56? It is greater than 56. It is, right? Which means you have to recalibrate M to M minus one and reset offset. So you reset offset, offset is equal to I. So now, offset will become four and M will become six. Oh, sorry, M will become six. What just happened? What just happened? I realized that X is greater than the array that you found. Okay, X is greater than 56, which means all of these are pretty much useless. I don't need to look at them. Okay, I don't need to see them anymore. I don't need to see them anymore. Okay, I don't need to check for them because I know for a fact, because this is an ascended array, obviously, I know for a fact that the value that I want to find is not in this. Okay, so, so it means I can set an offset to four and every time I check again, offset plus, remember that offset plus, it means I'm going to skip over these first four values. That is what offset is going to be used for. Offset is going to be used to eliminate the first half that you already looked in and did not find the, the number. That is how it is. That is what offset is used for. It's pretty straightforward. But you might w imagine, hey, Quinston, why did you do M minus one? Because if I used M directly, if I used M directly, it would be too big. So M was seven and 13 was over here. So it won't really be a very good idea. Plus I want to create a narrower paradigm, a narrower paradigm. Okay, so that's it. Next, I go back in the loop and this time I say offset plus Fibonacci generator of M minus two. What is offset? Offset is four and M minus two is four also, lol. Fibonacci generator of M minus two is uh, basically going to be zero, one, two, three, four, three. So the value right now of I is going to be seven, which because Fibonacci generator of three is four and the value of offset, oh sorry, this is three and the value of offset is four. So four plus three becomes seven and that is what your value is over here. So you check if X is greater than array of I, what is X? X in this case is um, 60 and array of I is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the 70 value. 70 is greater or 60 is greater than 70. No, it's not, which is why you do M is equal to M minus two. So currently you are searching over here. You didn't get the value, which means that everything above this is supposed to be eliminated. Everything above this is not needed. You get that everything above this is not needed because X is less than it. X is less than X is less than because everything above this is not needed. So what you do is you recalibrate M to four, but you don't change offset because offset says that this is not needed. And this M minus two says this is not needed which means now you're going to search only in this part over here. Isn't that insane? 
if if you don't if you don't appreciate that i don't know what to tell you that is literally so intelligent you eliminate it you literally say okay i don't need this because it's not there and i don't need this because that's not there that's what you're doing literally by saying m equal to m minus 2 you you basically blow it up blow up those 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 trails <laughs> insane right okay so m is equal to m minus 2 now you go back into the loop m is now 4 right m is 4 so you go back into the loop and what you basically find is that you have m equal to 4 so your Fibonacci number will be equal to uh, 4 minus 2, which is Fibonacci of 2, which is 1. And your offset will be equal to that value too. So value is 4. So 4 plus 1 gives you 5. And so the offset, or oh, sorry, the i becomes equal to 5. Now when your i is 5, you basically check. x is greater than array of i. What is i? 5. Array of i. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 58. So is 58 greater than or less than 6? So is 60 greater than 58? It is. It is. This is this is the this is what's going to be executed right now. So what I do is m equal to m minus one i. Uh, so m becomes three, and offset becomes i. So offset becomes five, in this case. And then you go back into the loop, and what you find in this case is that the same thing. Offset plus Fibonacci generated by minus two. M in this case is three, and um, m minus two is one. So Fibonacci generated is one. This value becomes one. And your offset is 5, so your i becomes 6. i becomes 6, then you check, um, is x greater than or less than array of 6? Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Holy mother of God. You actually found it. 60. That's the value you want, that you want to find. And so you return i. Because apart from these two, this is the only one that is actually correct. So that is how it works. It worked. It, it, it actually found i. And, and that's how this entire algorithm works. You eliminate, eliminate two thirds at one time, one third at, at another time, and then go on doing it, doing it. You eliminate a, a big chunk of the, of the array. And this is what you do continuously, narrowing down with the Fibonacci numbers to find your value. Now, there are some cases where uh, this will not work. And that is the case where M will be less than one. Uh, sorry, Fibonacci generator for M will be less than one. That is why you said, check this out. M always becomes, goes from the top value to the bottom value. So eventually M is not going to be sustainable. It's going to be, it's an expendable fuel. So M in this case is the fuel, right? You're, you go, you're, you're going through the algorithm until M exists. Once M is gone, because every time you do this, M becomes smaller. Once M is gone, you can't really go through the array. So in that case, there, there are only a limited amount of cases where that actually happens. But when that does happen, this is the thing that you want to run. A run a Fibonacci generator of m minus one, which so imagine a scenario when this will happen. So let's say Fibonacci generator of two. So Fibonacci generator of two is greater than one. Uh, no, because Fibonacci generator of two is actually one. So m equal to two in this case. If m equal to two, Fibonacci generator of uh, two minus one, which is one, is also one, which means this this part is true. And array of offset plus one. So offset plus one will be a value which is one, which is the value that you want to check for. If that is x, if that is if these two are equal, which means the single element that is left to check that is equal, then your return offset plus one. But this happens rarely. It, it doesn't really happen a lot of times. So it's not very prevalent. But that is how it works. Basically, there's one element left that you want to check for. You can't find it because m doesn't exist. M is less than the value that you want to check for. So and even if this doesn't exist, then you return minus one, which means that, okay, uh, the, the, the value did not exist. It just doesn't work. So, uh, sorry, the value X doesn't exist in the array. And that's just how you do it. So let me just run this program once and, and show you how to do it and show you how it runs. And the value is six, see, that's it. That's it, that's how you do this. So this code will be available on my GitHub. Uh, which is linked in the description. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm so happy you watched it. Um, like, share, and subscribe, and, and do give this video to the to your friends who are are interested in learning how the Fibonacci, specifically the Fibonacci search works. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.